Paramount at Madison Square Garden. Glad you're with us on Fight Night. Sam Rose along with Gil Clancy. And after the quick knockout of Eddie Curry by Jade Scott, we are set for more action. So let's go back into the ring to Ward Todd for the introductions to our next Ladies bout. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest is in the Junior Welterweight Division, scheduled for six rounds. And your referee is Harry Smith. We introduce first in the blue corner, wearing the silver and black trunks, weighing 137 pounds, his professional record, seven wins, a loss and a draw, six big knockouts from Brooklyn, New York. Here's Gerald Gray. And in the red corner, wearing the black trunks with silver stripe, Weighing 137 pounds, his record, five wins, four losses and a draw with a pair of KOs from San Juan, Puerto Rico, Danilo Claudio. Claudio. Scheduled for six. Gerald Gray. Bob Jackson is his trainer. And has fought on the undercards of several shows here at Madison Square Garden and not gotten TV exposure. This is an important night for him. Well, uh, I, I know that uh, Bobby Goodman, the matchmaker, was anxious to take a good look at Gerald Gray. And Bobby, one of the best uh, judges of talent in the country, so I guess there has to be a reason for it. Gerald Gray's last bout was in Atlantic City when he stopped Mike Powell. 46 in the fifth round. And Gray was very effective to the body in that fight. Here, a quick switch to southpaw for Gerald Gray. Certainly is a well built fighter, Sam. Looks like he's been chiseled out of steel. That night in Atlantic City, August 20th, he did make TV and it was a good performance for him. with some of those punches it was great. And Claudio was not punching back to so At this point, I don't think the ring is big enough for Danilo Claudio. He's trying to throw some back here, but Gray some short, hard punches. So the one advantage that the Gray has, and no matter how big the ring is, it's square, and there are corners where you trap a guy, as he has Claudio trapped right now. Gray using the right hand very well. And switch the south ball again. Gerald Gray is 24 years old from Queens. Likes to throw that left hook to the body. Been fighting pro for a little over a year, about a year and two months. Been pro in August. 1990, so it's almost two years, a little over two years now. And really picking up his pro career this past year. of round one. Stick it in to win. What? It's a New York Post Sports Radio 66 WFAN stick it in to win game. Oh, what do you win? One of these great cars and hundreds of Jets, Rangers, and Knicks tickets. So, uh, what do I have to... Round two, scheduled for six. Gerald Gray in the white trunks. Zilo Claudio from San Juan, Puerto Rico in black. And Claudio has been taking a lot of punishments. He's complaining about a low blow. Doing with is giving Gray the 
a signal that I don't like it down there. The bait pays attention. He'll just keep bombing him to the body. Combinations by Gray. Sam, you had mentioned that Gray's leverage on those left hooks. The one thing he does, he gets his legs a little too wide apart and takes away some of his power. Back to Southpaw again. Claudio must think he's fighting two guys. <laughs> really not fighting him, but trying to escape from two different guys. Started with the body shots and went upstairs. With some good straight punches. Claudio trying to answer back. Just doesn't seem that Claudio has anything in his punches at all. Seems to pull the punch here. When it lands. Great, real busy. Throws, throws a lot of punches. And, and switches from body to head, which is very, very good. He's a real strong kid. Going to the other. 
is trapped against the ropes again. Nowhere to hide here. Gray finds him every time and keeps landing. So these guys may know a little more than we do about Bud. It's the rice. It's the hops. It's the rice. But of course, we know a lot about other things. Hi. Can you buy something to drink? Yeah, like maybe a light beer? <laughs> Budweiser. Or uh, maybe you'd like a Bud. Someday, boy, you're gonna learn from your mistakes. Boxing simple. Hit him, hit him again, knock him out and leave. And I'm gonna fight Evander Holyfield. I'm bigger than he is, I'm younger than he is, and I can knock him out with either hand. On November 13th, there's gonna be a new heavyweight champion for me. Really? Budweiser presents Holyfield versus Bo. Heavyweight Championship Friday, November 13th, the Mirage, Las Vegas. To see it live on pay-per-view, call your cable company now. and Gil Clancy, ringside here at the Paramount at Madison Square Garden in New York. Glad you're with us for fight night. This is round four scheduled for six. Gerald Gray in the white trunks and Danilo Claudio in the black. It's been all gray thus far. And maybe one or even two, two-point rounds for Gray. It's been that one side. Complete domination by, by Gray. June 10th fight with Pedro Saiz, a real good one. There was a majority decision win for Saiz. One judge scored it a draw. One judge voted Saiz by one point. One judge gave it to Saiz by four. And I think we scored it a draw, Gil. It was that close. Oh, it was a real tough fight. I wonder what happened to Saiz. Saiz has had trouble getting fights. <laughs> If I was a uh, fight manager, I wouldn't want, want, wouldn't want my guy to fight him. A real tough southpaw. Gray has been able to get fights since that June 10th one. He's fought three times. This is his third fight since then. Now, Lenny D. Jesus in uh, Claudio's corner usually brings up some funny sharp fighters from Puerto Rico. Usually they give you a good run for your money, but their Claudio just doesn't seem to be no. in this contest at all. I mean, what is he thinking of? Yeah, this, this has been a total mismatch. Certainly not thinking about winning. Well, this is the kind of a fight where uh, Claudio hasn't really shown any signs of being hurt, but it seemed to me that like, referee could step in, Smith could step in and stop this fight at any time because it's just no contest. So it looked like he was ready to step in last round. I think the first sign of uh, any faltering or any wobbling on the part of Claudio would, uh, would be over. Crowd urging Gray to kind of pick up the pace. Well, he's doing what he can do. You know, it's very difficult to uh, nail a guy with clean punches when, when you have nothing to punch off. You're not countering anything. He's not throwing anything. Not at all. Good left hook got in by Gray. Thank you. 
thing, okay? Yes, Mr. Stewart. Listen, you're getting inside with this guy here, and you're not setting the weight back. I told you before, you're leaning all the way on the front. Still to come, Jose Vidal, the fine junior lightweight, who's now ranked in the top ten. He has turned things around in his pro career. Had a big win over Albert Rendon back on June 10th, but the turnaround started when he knocked out Ricardo Cepeda. What an impressive knockout. You can see, Sam, he's a happy warrior. You see that smile on his face? Just so happy to be up where he is now and getting to work. And his ability, Sam, I think he can fight just about anybody. He'll be taking on Mark Smith. Still to come, and then our main event, Aaron Davis and Craig Cummings. Ten round junior middleweight bout. Aaron Davis ranked number two in the world by the WBA in the junior middleweight division. Sam, is he lucky because uh, Vinny Pazienza gave up his title, and therefore Aaron Davis is going to fight a mandatory title fight if he wins this fight tonight. Once again, Julio Cesar, Julio Cesar Vasquez. Julio Julio Vasquez from Argentina. So usually those Argentinians are very, very clever boxers. I managed quite a few of them. They were all good boxers. What makes them that good? Well, I, the, 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 the uh, trainers down in Argentina, there's some good trainers down there. They're good defensive, good defensive fighters. Harry Smith has been taking a close look at Danilo Claudio last couple of rounds because Claudio's taken a lot of punishment. Just an exercise in futility on, on Claudio's part. Rage is punching away. It's been very methodical, very effective. Hasn't been flashy by any means. The left hook got in there by Gray. Claudio walks away. Gray just patiently walks over. Whenever Claudio stops, Gray resumes the pounding. Sam, do you think uh, Gray is more effective as a south corner than the, or the orthodox style? Well, he's, he's been pretty close. I think he's pretty close, Gil. I, I guess I have a tendency to, to like him right-handed. I like the way he throws the left hook from the right-hand stance. I, I agree with you. I, I like his left hook too, Sam, but I think that he feels more comfortable as a south boy. You can just see that uh, when the opportunity presents itself, he switches over. And he's looking to get the guy out of there. Understand that uh, James Buddy McGirt and Pernell Whitaker have signed to meet in March here in the main arena at Madison Square Garden. That's a, that's a fight, Sam. Two class oh, stylists. I mean, this is, this is going to be quite a fight. March the 6th at Madison Square Garden. End of round five. P.T. set the standard in gentlemen's entertainment, offering a touch of personal attention with elegance and style. Come see why our reputation rises high above all others, having great nightly drink specials and big screen TVs to catch the best in sports. P.T.'s Gentlemen Sports Club, it's a dream come true. P.T.'s tonight. On West Lawther Drive, just off East Northwest Highway. It's said that by the end of this century, Japan will have a stranglehold on the technology for automobiles, semiconductors, fiber optics, steel, and half the new patents in the world. Isn't it ironic when Japan needed the technology for... There is James Buddy McGirt, the welterweight champion in attendance. And obviously very happy over having signed for that Pernell Whitaker fight. That's two great champions in the ring. Oh, two real stylists, two smart, smart fighters. And you, you, know, you can see the kind of guy Buddy McGrady is. He's at the felt form all the time. He's a fighter. That's what he is. He stays in his business all the time. I met the Paramount. Did I say that? He used to be at the felt Did I say the, the Paramount? My God, and anybody that can't see the difference between the Paramount <laughs> and the felt form, and you'd have to be blind. 
We forgive you, Bert. Gray with that left hook. Very good. You know, Sam, I was watching Bob Jackson getting into the ring. Did yeah. you notice it? Bob any? Jackson, the uh, manager, the trainer of Gerald Gray? Yeah. Tell me about that, uh, that shirt he's wearing. Well, he told me it's an extra large, but it only goes about halfway around him. I think the only danger that Gerald Gray had in this fight is maybe Jackson would have tripped and fallen on him. <laughs> uh, Bob's a good guy. Best. He's a good trainer. Been around a long time. They were really disappointed about the Saez fight. They felt that they had won the fight, that Gray had won the fight by landing more effective punches. It's a real close fight and a good one. Gray has bounced right back from that defeat, his only one as a pro. I think it's time for Gerald Gray to step up beyond six round fights now. He's ready, he's ready for eight rounds. There's no question about that. He's, he has the skills. He has the strength. And you, you can see he has the stamina. He's been working for six rounds and uh, hasn't taken a deep breath. Really hasn't been tested at all here in this fight. Sam, who do you have ahead? <laughs> I stopped keeping score long ago. Not looking for a ninth inning rally the way the Braves did. Wasn't that yesterday. something last night? One of the all-time great finishes. What a story. How does that, how does that uh, Indian chant go, Sam? <laughs> you don't want me to do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm asking you specifically, <laughs> Sam. I'd like to hear it. I'm saving it for the World Series, Gil. If I can do it in a crowd, then I stay on key. Rage is plotting after... Claudio. And this one coming to a close. Get the scorecards in a hurry and let's get on to the next one. This one was not a very competitive matchup. Danilo Claudio, you can see, hey, I hung around for six rounds. What can you do? Gerald Gray, solid. He did what he had to do, had a one-sided fight, took care of business. Unfortunately, in a fight like that, really, the, you know, the skills that you do have uh, uh, really don't come out because uh, you're not tested at all. You have nothing to punch off of. Makes it a little difficult. Again, uh, Jose Vidal is on deck in his bout against Mark Anthony Smith. Davis and Craig Cummings still to come on fight night. As Joe Gray awaits the announcement. Slight delay. Our next fight night's coming up in Atlantic City next week. I'm ready. Stefan Johnson and Anthony Jones headline the card, and we'll also have Tom Boom Boom Johnson, featherweight contender, on the card. Although uh, Johnson and Jones is going to be some fight. Mm -hmm. I like that Stefan Johnson. Here's Ward Todd with the announcement of the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. Judge George DeGabriel scores the fight 60-53. Judge Al DeCesar saw it 60-54. And Judge Harry Papa Carol Ambus scores the fight 60-53 for your winner, Gerald Gray. It's a shutout. And one two-point round in there for Gerald Gray. No doubt about it. Satisfying victory for Gerald Gray. His eighth as a pro. He's 8-1-1. One one. He's had a good year in 1992 and uh, time for him to step up. This was an easy win for him. Needs some stiffer competition. Coming up next, scheduled 10 rounder in the junior lightweight division, Jose Vidal will take on Mark Anthony Smith. Don't